Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be talking about 7.1 day two, mid segments. This is a very specific type of segment that we create with our pro triangle proportions. So let's start with our definition here. Mid segment is a segment that connects the midpoints of any two sides. In a triangle. Okay, so for example, if I look at AB, I'm going to estimate my midpoint going to be right about here. Okay, mm, yeah, I don't like that one. It's got to go a little bit more, I'd say. Okay, well, let's do that again. Okay, that looks to be about a midpoint right there. If I look at BC on the other side, my midpoint there looks to be about right there, I'll say. Okay. So then I can draw in my mid segment right here. It connects those two. But here's the thing I said any two sides. So, for example, I can create more mid segments if I kind of like think of the triangle in other directions. Like this will technically be a mid segment there. Okay. Eh, actually, it's not a good spot. Mm. It's tough to estimate this on this. I don't like I don't like this diagram on here. All right, so that's about a mid segment there, and then I can also draw it here. So I can actually draw in uh, three different types of mid segments inside of a triangle like that. So mid segment theorem: <clears throat> If a segment joins two triangles at their midpoints, two triangle sides at their midpoints, then it is parallel to the third side. So this actually ties back to what we did before. So if I know for a fact that I have two midpoints, and I connect them, and one idea that I can show is if I, for me to know that they're midpoints, I can do stuff like this. If I know for a fact that I have like these congruent segments like this, where this one equals this one, and then this one equals this one, then I know I have two midpoints. So what I have then is that I can also treat it just like this, where they're parallel to each other, okay? So that is something that is kind of applies to what we did in the previous lesson as well. So this is another way we can show. So we have definitely have midpoints. Point P here, since it has eight and eight on, a, on the both sides there, that means that's a midpoint. Same thing with point Q. We got a nine and a nine. That also makes it a midpoint. Therefore, PQ is a mid segment. So when there is a mid segment, two similar triangles are created. And so if you look at that, you can see two triangles there because we have, there's one of them, pull that one out. Okay, there's one triangle and that's made up of APQ. And we've got eight, nine and X. The other triangle that we get is the big one. So we got that big one there, and that's made up of ABC. Now the sides, you notice are eight and eight for 16, uh, nine and nine for 18, and BC here is six. So AP divided by AQ is gonna be, in this case, eight over nine. Okay, so I'm just doing the eight, whoops. I'm doing the eight divided by nine, AP over AQ. PQ, Okay, that's this one right here. So when I look at the diagram, the thing is, I need to make sure that that side matches to that side. So PQ over BC, in this case is X over six. The thing is, when I look at that ratio, X over six, since I have two similar triangles, then I'm gonna do this as like eight over 16 or nine over 18. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. 8 over 16 uh, or 9 over 18. Okay, all of those are going to be the same because I created these two similar triangles. Well, there's a little bit of a shortcut. I can set these up with, with proportions if I really wanted to, but our mid segment theorem is going to make it a little bit shorter. If a segment joins two triangles at their midpoints, then its length is one half of the third side's length. So I got the midpoint for AB and midpoint for BC. 
So I'll draw that in. Okay, so if I call the third side here D, this length here is one half times D. And again, it has to be specifically a midpoint. So some other things we know about that, again, if these are congruent and then these are congruent, I know I have two midpoints. Or I label them with numbers, okay? So real quick, going back up here, I can actually very quickly find X. Since I have a mid-segment here, X is just half of six, giving me three. Okay, it offers a really nice shortcut versus having to do my cross multiplication. So let's look at a couple more examples here. In each triangle, M, N, and P are midpoints of the sides. Name the segment parallel to the given side and state the missing lengths. So we got midpoints here, here, and here. So CD is that one. So it needs to be parallel to one of the mid-segments, which in this case is going to be PN. Okay. The length of DE is right here. And the length of NE is this one. So with a mid-segment, we know that the mid-segment itself is half of that third side. So if I look at that eight there and I go to the whole thing, if it's the mid-segment is half of that third length, that means the third length is two times the mid-segment. So I'm coming back up here real fast. So that's the other way I could have gone with this. So let's call it uh, like PQ as well. Okay, so I set that up originally that AC or one half of AC is equal to PQ or two times PQ is equal to AC. So this actually helps as well because if I wanted to go from this direction to this direction, I'd double it. So that's what we can do down here. So we did two times eight, it's gonna give me a 16 there. We also know that the tri or that side of the triangle is split into equal pieces because that's a midpoint. So that means that has to be eight and eight. So we get all those eights in there. All right, example two, find the length of SR and FD. So we look at this one. Before I jump into any kind of setting up equations or anything, because these can get confusing based on what we've done so far, I'm gonna look at the fact that I do have midpoints for R and S. They get the congruent sides on each, on each part. That means that the mid-segment is SR. So SR is a mid-segment. Since it's a mid-segment, I have evidence that shows that. That means that SR is equal to one half of DF. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna set them up, okay? Actually, you know, I'm gonna change that one. Since SR is a mid-segment, I'm gonna actually gonna flip that and go the other way with it. I know that DF is equal to two times SR. Personally, I'd rather do this way just because I don't have to deal with a fraction then. So DF is X plus two. And then I got two times SR, which is two X minus 14. So we'll distribute that. So that X plus two is equal to four X minus 28. Uh, let's add 28 to both sides. And then we'll also subtract X to both sides. Those are gone, those are gone. I get 30 is equal to three X. Then we'll divide by three so that I get X equals 10. And you know what? I should have a little bit more space. So let's do this. I'm just gonna shift everything over there. The magic of my iPad, love it. All right, so the length of SR. SR was two X minus 14. So we're gonna do two times 10 minus 14. I'm just gonna plug my 10 value back in for both of my X's here. So that means SR is equal to 20 minus 14, which is equal to uh, six. And then DF or FD, okay, that's gonna equal to 10 plus two, which is gonna give me 12. And you notice six is half of 12. Good, that's a good nice little check for myself. I know I did the right thing when I got real numbers there that are, um, oh, just realized missing a G for mid-segment, okay. Okay, um, my magical thing there, put a G or move the G over on that side. That's fun. Um, anyway, sorry. So my mid-segment SR is half of the FD, 12. So six is half of 12. All right, that's it for mid-segments. Remember, this is a very special proportion out of the entire triangle. 
Um, it just creates this scenario where if we have midpoints, we get this length that is half of that length, but it's also parallel. So we can still use our properties from before. All right, that's it for today. Take care.